Okay, so it's quick tip time, and whilst this is not the most exciting tip, it will help you get around Ableton so much faster, and you'll be thanking me afterwards. So every single day of January, I am bringing you a new music production tip. 31 days, 31 tips, and today I'm talking about keyboard shortcuts. Now it's not the most interesting thing, I can already hear you yawning, but believe me, they're gonna make you so much faster in Ableton. Pretty much every single feature has its own keyboard shortcut. And in this video, I wanted to show you a few that I use all the time that really sped up the way that I work. So let's jump into Ableton and I'll show you them. First thing we need to look at is the keyboard because you can actually use your keyboard, your computer keyboard, as a MIDI keyboard to play notes. Now, if you've got that activated, then this little icon will be lit up. What we need to do is we need to turn this off because some of the keyboard shortcuts I'm gonna show you actually use those same keys. And if you try and use them, then you'll probably notice that the keyboard shortcut doesn't work, but you are actually playing MIDI notes. So when you're not playing MIDI notes, then just turn that off and you'll be able to use these keyboard shortcut keys. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is zooming because when you're going about in Ableton, you wanna try and get about to different parts in the track as quickly as possible. Now, there's a few different features that are within Ableton that allow you to zoom it very, very quickly. The first one are these two new buttons that appeared recently in Ableton 10.1. They are the height and width buttons. This allow you to scale the track to fit the height and the width. So if I hit the H, for example, it scales the window in height wise to kind of almost get every single track on the screen. Now it's not always possible because you might have a whole load of tracks on there and it's just not possible to fit them on there, but it fits them on in a way where you can just about see the volume for each one of the tracks within there and it will try and fit as many different tracks on the screen as possible. If you hit the W button, it will scale it to the width of your whole entire track. So as you can see, you can fit everything within there. Now I did say this is all about keyboard shortcuts and you can use exactly the same keys on your keyboard. So the H and the W on your keyboard do exactly the same. So if I hit W on the keyboard, it will toggle between the width. And the same goes for the H key. It just makes it a whole lot quicker for going round. Now the next two keyboard shortcuts are really great. It's like a zoom and undo zoom, which is really, really cool. Say for example, I've got this clap within here. Now, if I want to zoom to this clap, I could use the zoom tool here, and then I've got to kind of rescale the, the track to make, make it fit height-wise. But actually, you can use the Z and the X key on the keyboard. So if I hit the Z key, it will zoom into just that clip, and it'll make that clip as large as it can do. Now, what I can do is I can undo that zoom, so I can go back to what it was before by hitting the X key, which is really, really handy. Now say for example, I wanted to zoom in on all of these clips here. I just make a selection, then I hit the Z key and it will zoom me into there. Now I could also zoom in further than that. Say for example, I wanted to zoom in on these hats. I could hit the Z key and it will zoom into them. Now I can actually keep pressing the X key to zoom back out again. So it will take me back one step and then it will take me back again. So as you can see, it's a really kind of cool way to zoom in and out. And it just makes getting around your whole track in Ableton so much quicker. Now let's look at the browser. And one of my favorite features of Ableton 10 is the ability to be able to use collections. Now these are favorites folders that I've already gone over in a previous tip. But one of the great things is that you don't even have to kind of click and drag things to put them in there or even right click on them to put them within that folder. You can easily just find the sample you want, for example, and then all you need to do is hit the number key on the keyboard. So if I right click on here, you can see all of my collections are set up here and we have them numbered on the right hand side here. So if I hit one on the keyboard, it will go in the kicks folder. If I hit two on the keyboard, it will go in the tops folder and it will go into whichever collection you got set up like that. So when you're going through these, you can easily just hit one on the keyboard or two or three or four and easily put them into the collection that you want to, which makes going, getting through and putting these things in your collection so much quicker. So definitely remember those shortcut keys. Next up, let's have a look at the actual clips within your project. Now, obviously we all know the kind of cut and copy commands. They're usually quite generic, but one of the greatest features of Ableton is a way of being able to duplicate clips. So rather than going copying and then pasting, you can actually do Apple D or Command D on the PC and it will duplicate the clip to the next available space. And now this is a really quick way of being able to build up a track. So you can actually just add in clips just by duplicating them across. And it's a very quick way to kind of almost fill up space when you need to. 
Now another thing I do all of the time is consolidate my clips. For example here I have a clap here which is actually one clip which has been looped up twice. So you can see the little kind of mark there that means it has been looped up twice but I can actually turn it into its own clip. I can right click on here and I can go to consolidate which makes it into one clip. Now I could also do that on the keyboard and it's something that I do all the time and that is Apple J. On the PC it's Control J and that makes it into its own clip. Now you can do that with MIDI clips or you can do that with audio clips. For example, I have one loop here which loops up four times. I can take that and I can consolidate it into one audio clip, which just makes it into one single thing. So consolidate is a command that I use all the time, so it makes sense to kind of learn that keyboard shortcut. Next up, let's have a look at the MIDI clips themselves because there's actually a couple of really cool shortcuts that I use in here all of the time. So the first one is hitting B on the keyboard. You can see my cursor at the moment is an arrow key. If I hit the B key, it turns into a little pencil, which allows me to then draw a note if I want to. I can just hit the B key to toggle between the normal selection and draw mode. It just makes it very, very quick. and just means I don't have to go into the menus at all. So it makes it very, very easy for me to be able to add a note and then go straight into selection mode. Now you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move MIDI notes. For example, if I select these MIDI notes and then use the up and down keys on my keyboard, I can move that note up and down to the different notes within the keyboard. But say for example, if I'm playing this a bit too low and I wanna move it up an octave, sure I can hit the up key 12 times to get to the upper octave, or I can hold down shift on my keyboard and then press up and it will move up one octave. Now at the moment this is on a clap, but you can imagine it working very, very well when you've got an instrument of some sort and you wanna move it up an octave. Say for example, you've copied the notes from a bass instrument and you're moving it onto a piano, for example. Now one of the other things that I tend to do quite a lot is deactivating notes. So say for example within here I don't want the fourth clap. Now I could delete that by hitting the delete key on my keyboard but what I tend to do is I actually deactivate a note. So if I right click on here you can see there is the option to deactivate the note. This actually means that the note stays in there but it doesn't actually do anything. Now obviously I can right click on it every time and do the activate and deactivate but you can actually do it by just hitting zero on your keyboard which makes it a whole lot quicker. So I will select a note, then I'll hit zero on the keyboard and that'll deactivate the note. Now when I'm writing bass lines or when I'm writing main lines, I tend to do this quite a bit when I'm kind of moving notes around, but I want to remember where the original notes were. It makes it very, very handy. And it's not just in MIDI clips that you can do this. You can do this also on normal clips on the actual main arrangement window. So say for example, this audio clip here, I could hit zero on my keyboard and that'll deactivate that audio clip, which means it just won't play, but it'll still stay in there as reference. So I could even come back to it a bit later. So say for example, if you wanted to delete something, but you weren't quite sure, you could deactivate it and then you'd be able to use it a bit later if you wanted to. It will stay there, but it won't do anything. So those are my favorite keyboard shortcuts. I learned those because those were the features I was using the most within Ableton. And by learning those, I've become so much quicker in moving around Ableton. So I definitely recommend checking out those features that you use the most and finding out the keyboard shortcuts for them. If you learn them, it might take you a little while to get, get used to using the keyboard for that kind of stuff. But believe me, it'll make you so much quicker, so much more efficient, and you'll be thanking me for it. So if this video has been useful to you, then definitely subscribe to my channel. As I say, every single day this month, a brand new music production tip. So definitely subscribe and hit that notification icon so you're notified the moment that pops up online. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.